Hello guys, welcome to Lingua Marina. Today we're gonna do my favorite thing in the world. Today we're gonna take a test. I don't know why I am always so excited about tests, but there are a few things that I really want to share and I took TOEFL twice in my life. Uh, the first time I took it was in 2014 when I was going through the admissions process and uh, I scored 30 out of 30 during my speaking part. And uh, the second time I took TOEFL was in 2020 and I took the online version of the test. And again, I scored 30 out of 30 on speaking. So speaking is something that, you know, a lot of people are afraid of, but hopefully this video will put you at ease. Hopefully this video will make you more confident in your speech because there are a few things uh, that you can learn before the test. And if you spend enough time preparing, even just by watching this video, it will be a lot easier for you to take the test. Now we're gonna go through actual TOEFL speaking questions, um, but before we dig deeper into the actual questions, I want to work with your mindset, I don't know. Um, but anyways, I want you to stop and uh, realize that if you're starting this TOEFL prep, that means you're done with actually learning English. Your TOEFL prep has nothing to do with learning grammar, learning new words. Yes, you might refresh some idioms in your memory because you want to use them during your writing part because this is where they really pay attention to your beautiful language. And also during your speaking part, if you say things like, oh, this trip was good, my friends thought it was good, and I thought it was good, of course, that sounds a little bit boring. And of course, test makers want you to speak using different words. Now, what you also need to remember that test makers don't want you to fail. I want to tell you the story. Uh, I actually freaked out during my first TOEFL test because, you know, my life depend, kind of depended on it because I needed to score 106 to get into my dream university. And during the speaking part, there was a question, like talk about your city or something, something really basic. And you have 45 seconds to speak. And I was looking at the screen and I was talking. And when I was just wrapping up my answer, my brain was like, oh, let's add this thing. But then my brain was also like, let's just, you know, stop here. And then I ran out of time. So the way I wrapped up that answer was, uh... And that was it. And my first thought was, you know, I failed because I thought they were going to punish me for not finishing my answer with a conclusion. Turns out that didn't really matter and I got 30 out of 30. So I want you to realize is that the structure of the test is super predictable. We're going to go through it. You're going to know exactly how the questions look. And you're gonna know exactly how to structure your answer. And it's okay if you don't finish your question number one with a conclusion. It's totally fine. But it's not okay if you use the word good 15 times in your answer. Try to think of alternatives, right? Also, test makers want you to sound as natural as possible. So if you pause, if you think for a couple seconds, that's totally okay. They don't want all the students to become robots who speak as if their voice is generated by AI, no mistakes, no pauses, everything is super nice and clean. No, they don't want that. They want real humans. So just, again, relax. Because when we're relaxed, our language just flows out of us. You just sound more natural. Oh, and another thing I wanted to add is that I took my TOEFL test before starting this channel. And my speech was so much worse. Anyways, let's get into it. Let's, uh, please get ready. Uh, I need you to take a piece of paper and I want you to take a pen because this is something you're allowed to do during the exam and I really want you to take advantage of that because you're gonna write things down. Now I'm gonna use a link that's in my description so you can go ahead and check it out later after this video. So there is a website called ETS.org. ETS is a company behind the TOEFL test and they have a free practice test on their website. This is exactly what we're going to use for this video. We're going to go and take the actual practice test. Now in this video, I will give you some templates, some phrases that you can learn so you can start your answers to different questions. And you can also find all of the templates that I use that my teachers have created 
um, on the website called LinguaTrip, which is my company where professional teachers will help you prepare for TOEFL. And I've also recorded some classes for you about my own experience. But anyways, what I want you to do is I want you to take those templates or whatever templates you have. And when TOEFL starts, you're going to see this screen. I'm going to look at my computer, so don't get confused. And they're going to give you some directions for the speaking section. Now, they are the same all the time. Nothing changes. So basically, this is your free time. If you read the, if you read the speaking section directions before the test, then during the test, I want you to use your paper to write down templates for four questions. And this is exactly what I did during my tests. For the first question, you don't have templates. For the other questions, you do have templates. So we're not going to do this now, just because um, also regarding templates. Um, use the ones that are more natural for you. Don't try to use something really sophisticated just because you saw it on our list of templates. Don't do it because again, you want to sound as natural as possible. And they're going to read you all of these directions and you're going to write down your templates. Okay, now let's start with question number one. It's a question about a familiar topic. I was asked about my city or something and I always ask about something really, you know, something really familiar, something you encounter in your daily life. And here you just speak clearly, speak your heart out, no structure, just, just talk, okay? State whether you agree or disagree with the following statement. Then explain your reasons using specific details in your explanation. Learning through online courses is more effective than learning in the traditional classroom setting. If this were an actual test question, you would have 15 seconds to prepare your response and 45 seconds to record your response. Now let's answer this question together. Uh, there are definitely pros and cons to both, right? I can argue that online learning is better. You can argue that offline education is something that you strive for. Anyways, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you just answer, okay? In my opinion, online learning is more effective than learning in the traditional environment for several reasons. Reason number one is that you can learn anything from home. You don't have to travel. You don't have to apply for a visa. You don't have to move to another country. Everything is accessible from your computer, your laptop, or your phone. The second reason is that online classes tend to be more affordable compared to offline learning. That means you can learn a lot more for the same amount of money. And reason number three is that online education is more accessible for moms. If they have to stay home with their kid, they could potentially learn something new at the same time. And this is where you can wrap up. You can say, this is why I think um, online education is better, or you can just stop right there. That's it. This is your answer, okay? By the way, it's not just me providing these answers. I also asked our teacher, Anastasia, to give feedback about my answer, whether it was well-structured, whether I made some mistakes, and overall to grade me according to TOEFL grades. She has helped so many students get over 100, so I am excited to see what she thinks about my answers. Marina's answer is effective, as she responded directly to the question in her opening thesis and presented clear arguments that support her main idea. There were no serious grammar errors, and her pronunciation and intonation were good. Rather than using reason number one, it's more natural to simply say, first, you can. Providing two well-elaborated reasons is better than giving three rushed reasons. For example, Marina could have elaborated on one of the examples by sharing a personal experience of successful online learning. Repetition is another issue. Marina repeated learn six times, online three times, and reason four times, which will be reflected in the AI report. Having two reasons here would have helped to avoid excessive repetition. I also recommend avoiding repetitive sentences, such as you don't have to do this, you don't have to do that, and using well-developed sentences instead. Finally, Marina should avoid taking long pauses, as they will hurt the AI score. The things that I wrote down for myself, in my opinion, this is like my super small template, in my opinion, and then one, two, three, three reasons. Again, you only have 15 seconds, so you don't really have time to write down your reasons. Just maybe think of them. Okay, reason number one, affordable. Reason number two, saves time. Reason number three, I'm a mom. So yeah, let's uh, let's say that it's, it's better for, for moms. That's it. 
and then you just uh, uh, speak your heart out. So this is the way you answer question number one. I highly, 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 highly recommend you to practice. Um, if you can just uh, switch on a timer on your phone and just talk about like anything, uh, a book that you've read, a movie that you watch. Why is it a good movie? Why is it a bad movie? Give two or three reasons. Why you think travel is good? Why you think travel is bad? Like whatever. Just practice those 45 second answers to time yourself and get comfortable with the overall time pressure. Again, this exam kind of has nothing to do with real life, but it's a stressful situation. It's something that you train and something that you get good at if you practice. So if you want to practice more, as I mentioned, we have a course for TOEFL test takers, but what excites me the most about this course are actually students' results because they come to us and they're able to improve their score by 20 or 30 points and many of them end up getting over 100 on TOEFL. And we have this special chat for all of the students and every day somebody shares, you know, oh my god, my TOEFL is tomorrow or I just came back from the test, I am so scared or somebody gets a result and says like, hey, I just got over 100 on TOEFL. So it's also a great community and I remember when I was preparing for my TOEFL test, I really needed someone's support, someone's shoulder to cry on because, oh my god, it was so, so stressful. So the course is not only the knowledge on how to take the test, it is also a community that you can rely on and also access to Anastasia, who is the teacher. She actually scored 119 out of 120 on TOEFL. What can be better? I've also recorded a couple of videos for that course to motivate you to take the test and I also shared my experience taking it. As part of the course, you get access to our speaking club to practice your English in real life conversations. And if you get the guru package, you will get an individual class with Anastasia while well, she will be able to give you a feedback on your speaking, writing, reading and listening skills and also give you personal recommendations to get a higher score on your TOEFL. And because you're watching this video, you get a special code. It is Lingua Marina and you get $20 off. The link is down in the description box. You can start the course right away. And we always keep the course updated so you can be prepared for the exam day. Fingers crossed for you guys. And if you're watching this video and you're about to take your TOEFL test, please come back after your TOEFL test and share your score in the comments down below. We've done that for my other TOEFL videos and it's just so amazing to see people come back in a few months and say like, hey, I just scored 100 on TOEFL. I just scored 90 on TOEFL. I just scored 110 on TOEFL. These comments are so motivating for me and for people who are watching these videos. Thank you guys so much. Now let's move on to the second question. In the second question, you're going to read an article and you're gonna listen to a conversation and then you have to report on what you've heard. Now here I strongly suggest that you take notes. And something I strongly suggest as well is that you practice taking notes in a stressful environment. Sometimes you create your own contractions for words. Sometimes people create their own symbols. I don't know, whatever you're gonna do, just do it before the exam so that it's easier for you to take those notes. You have 30 seconds to prepare and 60 seconds to answer. Read the article from a university newspaper. You will have 50 seconds to read the article. Begin reading now. Now listen to a conversation between two students. Hey, Sue, did you see this article? Yeah, I did. I don't think that's a very good idea. Really? You don't think it's a safety hazard, like they said? 
No, at least not during the day. I'm pretty sure both of those accidents happened at night when it's harder to see cyclists. They didn't say that in the article. Oh, that does make a difference. Sure, it does. Maybe at night with low visibility, there's a safety hazard. But I don't think there's any danger in the daytime, which is when most people need to move around and get to classes. Yeah, that makes sense. Besides, it's such a big campus. If they do this, it's going to be really hard to get around. Well, we can always take the bus, I guess. But the buses only run once an hour. That's true. They're not very convenient. No, not at all. If people have to take the bus, we'll end up sitting around waiting for the next one all the time, and we're all too busy to waste our time doing that. The woman expresses her opinion of the proposed policy change. State her opinion. And explain the reason she gives for holding that opinion. If this were an actual test question, you would have thirty seconds to prepare your response and sixty seconds to record your response. Now, when you're listening, pay attention to the reasons for the speaker's opinions. I made some notes、uh, when I read the article, and I also made some notes、uh, when Sue was talking. Now, you need to write down some key words and phrases. Opinions, and why someone had this or that opinion. Now, all of this sounds like a typical American college, you know, in the U.S. For some reason,、uh, well, no one wants to be liable for anything. I'm going to start a timer for 60 seconds, and we're going to answer this question. According to the article, the university management is going to ban bicycles on campus because there have been minor accidents, and the management believes that bicycles can threat students' safety on campus. And they suggest that students start using buses instead of bicycles. One of the students, however, disagrees with this new policy. And she has several reasons for that. Reason number one is that she thinks those accidents happen during the night when visibility is low, and she states that when students can see everything during daytime, there are no accidents. So why ban the bicycles? Another reason why she disagrees with this new policy is that the solution that the university suggests. Doesn't really work for her. She mentions that buses only run once an hour, and the campus is huge, which means there will be a lot of waiting and a lot of time wasted. This is why Sue doesn't like the new policy. Okay, should be good. So here you actually have the structure. Did you notice that?、Uh, I mentioned what we've read in the article. I mentioned that Sue disagreed, and I also gave a couple of reasons why she disagreed, and then I wrapped up. This is why Sue doesn't like this new policy. That's it. It's important to keep the reading summary to about 15 seconds. For question type two, most of the score comes from summarizing the listening task. So it would have been better to say, according to the announcement, the university will soon ban the use of bikes on campus, since they are a safety hazard, and the free campus bus service is an alternative way to get around. It's also possible to shorten the transition to the woman disagrees with this policy. Short and sweet. As in question one, we don't need reason number one. Let's change it to first. She thinks that there is no need to introduce a conclusion. Marina could have used this time to add more details. She could have mentioned that people really need to get around during the day, and the campus is really big. These are both details from the woman's first reason that weren't included in the answer. She could have also added, "They're too busy to sit around waiting," to the woman's second reason. So it's all about introducing more details from the audio. Other than that. The organization is good. The grammar and delivery are excellent. Okay, question number. How are you doing, by the way? If it sounds complicated, it's okay. You practice, all right. And also, something that you need to remember is that if your English is intermediate, but you want to score over hundred, which means advanced on TOEFL, it is not a very realistic goal if you only have a couple of weeks, right? If your English is intermediate, but you need over hundred, you need to stop your TOEFL prep now, take a general English course. Improve your speaking in general. Improve your vocabulary. Improve your grammar, and then come back and do the TOEFL prep. If your English is advanced and you need to score over 100, all you need is like a couple of weeks to prepare for TOEFL because you just need to get acquainted with the structure of the test. You need to get acquainted with what it looks like, with the topics, with the language, like 
and, and then that's it. You just take the test. Okay, we're moving on to questions three and four. They're more academic and they might cover topics that you're not familiar with, like psychology, economics, biology. Biology has always been hard for me. Or like ancient history. I've never really studied ancient history. And when it's in English, it's like a double threat uh, for me. Anyways, we're all students here. So we're going to move on to question number three and four. What I suggest for these questions and for TOEFL in general, read as many academic articles as possible, uh, watch BBC YouTube videos, watch TED Talks, just to get acquainted with uh, terminology. In question three, you're going to read a passage about an academic term or a concept. Then you listen to a lecture about the same topic. You'll have 30 seconds to prepare and 60 seconds for speaking. They're not generous with their timing at all. Well, here, please take notes. Like, this is where things get a little bit complicated. Not as complicated as in reading. Reading is the hardest part for me because it's super stressful. You know, your test just starts. Speaking is easier. But if you hear some terms, write them down. If you hear some facts, numbers, write them down. And remember, this is an English language test, not a chemistry test, not a psychology test. They do not expect you to know everything on the topic. They just expect you to speak good English. That's it. All right. And next. Now read the passage from a psychology <gasps> textbook. Psychology. You have 45 seconds okay. to read the passage. Begin reading now. Now listen to part of a lecture on the topic in a psychology class. This happens all the time with kids in schools. Say there's a little boy or girl who's just starting school. Well, they're not really used to the rules about proper behavior for a classroom. So at the beginning they might, I don't know, interrupt the teacher, walk around the classroom when they're supposed to be sitting down, you know, just misbehaving in general. Okay, but what happens? Well, the teacher gets angry with them when they act this way. They might get punished. They have to sit at their desks when everyone else is allowed to go outside and play. And they certainly don't like that. Soon, they'll learn that this kind of behavior gets them in trouble. They'll also learn that when they raise their hand to talk to the teacher and sit quietly and pay attention during class, they're rewarded. The teacher tells them she's proud of them and maybe puts little happy face stickers on their homework. Now that their behavior gets a good reaction from the teacher, the kids learn to always act this way in class and not behave the way they used to. Using the example from the lecture, explain what behavior modification is and how it works. If this were an actual test question, you would have 30 seconds to prepare your response and 60 seconds to record your response. The text introduces the concept of behavior modification. It states that if after some action, a person experiences positive reaction, then the person will continue with these actions. However, if he or she receives negative reaction, they will modify their behavior in order to maximize positive reaction. The professor explains this concept with an example of kids who just start at school. If Kids start walking around when they're not allowed to. If they start interrupting the teacher, they get negative consequences and they don't like it. So they eventually modify their behavior. However, if they listen to the teacher, if they raise their hand when they want to answer, they get a sticker with a happy face from the teacher. They get a positive reaction. And this way they learn how to always act in a way that gets a positive reaction from a teacher. This is how the professor explains the concept described in the article. My notes, as always. Regarding question three, 
the summary of the reading text is way too long. Maria spent about 25 seconds on that, when 15 is the recommended amount. It's better to say the reading is about behavior modification, which is when we change our behavior based on our knowledge of its consequences. I liked the transition to the lecture summary. Also, nice use of so as a conjunction and however as a transition. There is no need for a conclusion at the end. Instead, it's better to just include additional details from the lecture. For instance, Marina could have said, the teacher gets angry and students are punished, instead of just saying there are negative consequences. She could have mentioned that when they act nicely, the teacher says he or she's proud of them. Basically, a few more straight details could have been added if Marina cut the conclusion and shortened the reading summary. That would increase her topic development score from the human writer and probably improve the vocabulary score from the AI. The delivery remains fantastic, but it's important to watch out for pauses. They are infrequent, but if your target score is high, every bit matters. The AI score will definitely be way lower than the human score for this question and it's entirely because of vocabulary. Marina should avoid repeating they and if they. It's possible to say when it's not permitted instead of when they're not allowed to, or start interrupting instead of if they interrupt, and raise their hand instead of if they raise their hand. Our last question and then we're done. Listen to part of a lecture in a business class. If a consumer has to choose between two products, what determines the choice? Assume that someone, a purchaser, is choosing between two products that cost the same, okay? If people have a choice between two identically priced products, which one will they choose? They choose the one they think is of higher quality, of course. But what does it mean for a product to be a high-quality product? Well, business analysts usually speak of two major factors of quality. One factor is reliability, and the other is what we call features. So reliability. What's reliability? Well, a product is reliable if it works the way we expect it to work, if it can go a reasonable amount of time without needing repairs. If a product, a car for example, doesn't work the way it should and needs repairs too soon, we say it's unreliable. So product reliability means basically the absence of defects or problems that you weren't expecting. It used to be that when people thought about product quality, they thought mainly about reliability. Today, it's different. People do still care about reliability, don't get me wrong, it's just that manufacturing standards are now so high that, we'll take cars for example, today. Today's cars are very reliable, so reliability is important, but it's not going to be the deciding factor. So if reliability isn't the deciding factor anymore, what is? Features. All those extras. The things a product has that aren't really necessary, but that make it easier to use or that make it cool. For example, new cars today are loaded with features like electric windows, sunroofs, air conditioning, stereos, and so forth. When people are comparing products today, they look at features, because reliability is pretty much equal across the board. And that's why manufacturers include so many features in their products. Using points and examples from the lecture, explain the two major factors of product quality and how their role in consumer decision-making has changed. If this were an actual test question, you would have 20 seconds to prepare your response and 60 seconds to record your response. At the beginning of the lecture, professor describes what determines consumer's choice, if the cost of two products is the same. Of course, if the cost is the same, the consumer is going to choose a higher quality product. And she says that a higher quality product is characterized by reliability and features. By reliability, she means that the product works the way we expect it to work. By features, she means that the product is cool. However, the professor mentions that today, things have changed. And she provides examples from the car industry. Cars in general became very reliable because of manufacturing process. This is why most of consumers make their choices based on features, whether the car has a stereo or any other things that make it cool. All in all, the professor mentions that cars are more reliable nowadays, so reliability is no longer a deciding 
feature. In terms of the structure, I think Marina wasted too much time at the beginning introducing the general theme. I recommend saying, the lecture describes two things that help customers choose between two similar products. First, and go into detail. The score is based on your ability to summarize the two things from the lecture, so it's important to focus on those. Test takers who waste too much time at the beginning won't be able to include many details related to those two things, which is what happened in this answer. Because of the poor structure, Marina wasn't able to include many details. She barely talked about what makes a car reliable, how a reliable car doesn't need many repairs, and about the kinds of features that make a car great. So the key to this question is to focus almost exclusively on the two things mentioned in the lecture. The things I liked about this answer are an effective use of this is why as a transition, solid delivery, and good grammar. To get a high score for this question type, it's important to use transitional phrases like as a result, consequently, moreover, for example, and therefore. Focus mostly on the examples and use a mix of simple and compound sentences. Overall, this will score a solid 25. It's important to keep in mind that your TOEFL speaking score may fluctuate depending on the question topics you get. This attempt was not Marina's best. However, with more practice, she can easily achieve a score of 30, which she has accomplished previously. Here are a few tips for those who want a high score. Number one, speak fluently and without hesitation to maximize your score. This will really please the automated scoring software. Number two, use descriptive words and avoid redundancy to increase the vocabulary score given by the AI. Number three, when answering integrated questions, provide as much detail as possible from the listening tasks. For questions three and four, spend 15 seconds summarizing the reading and then move on to discussing the listening task. And number four, speak clearly and with good intonation. Make sure your pronunciation and intonation do not hinder comprehension. Marina does not have a problem with this, but I know many students who lose points due to poor pronunciation. Thank you so much, Anastasia, for providing feedback. Thank you so much, guys, for watching this video up to the very end. I know it was a lot. I know, I know. But, uh, you know, you only take TOEFL maybe like a couple times in your life. I took it twice. You might need to take it, you know, three or four times, but it's okay. It's an experience and uh, enjoy it while you can, okay? Thank you so much. Please subscribe to this channel and please do not forget to like this video. If your TOEFL test is um, in uh, a couple days, comment down below uh, and get positive energy from other students because this is something a lot of us need before the test. Thank you guys so much and I'll see you very soon on this channel. Bye-bye.